Hello, this is Ben Solomon, founder and managing partner of the FedTech program. This is a recruiting webinar that's recorded, same webinar we normally will do uh, in person. So if you've attended an in-person webinar, no need to watch this video. Um, what we're going to do in the course of this short webinar is offer a little bit of perspective on what is the program, what's the upside to participate, and then answer a few questions that usually come up. Um, so let's just jump right in. So if you look at federal R&D investment is really one of the biggest drivers of technology development in the world. Uh, before I started working in this space, I was kind of surprised to hear that every year you have about $140 billion a year that are spent by government on really high-risk R&D that is uh, probably the type of investment that most private capital would not be interested in touching, but creates a lot of really interesting technologies that down the road could be uh, impactful for both government use and commercial use. So this is really kind of the, the opportunity space that our program plays in. Um, just to give you some sense of some products that you probably touch on, on a daily basis that started with some form of federal investment, things like uh, the driverless car program came out of Carnegie Mellon, uh, started with, with majority of DARPA investment um, programs like the DARPA Grand Challenge. Um, if you look at an iPhone, I always like to give this example, uh, about 15 inventions in there, if not a lot more, that started with some form of government investment. Think about GPS, think about microprocessors, lithium batteries, Siri was initially a DARPA program, um, all created by government or invested in by government um, before being spun out into to products that are obviously really impactful for everyone's life. For those of you that have kids, um, if you fed, them, fed your kids baby food, uh, baby uh, formula, that is, 90% uh, chance that that formula had a fatty acid that was developed by NASA for astronauts in it, um, now spun into to, uh, baby formula across the world. Um, those of you that are fans of the Roomba uh, robotics technology in there that was initially developed for the, the Department of Defense, uh, bomb robots in Iraq and Afghanistan ended up being transferred into, you know, now a commercial product. So... Anyway, you know, what, what you would find in the course of interacting um, with government-funded research is there's lots of it out there. It's really hard in some ways from an entrepreneur standpoint to go and um, interact and, and find opportunity, which is, is really the reason we created the program. So if you think about FedTech, think about it as kind of a, a two-sided two market where on one side we have great folks like yourself that we then will go out and pair up with technologies from our lab partners. We work with over 25 labs and universities across the country. Uh, many of them, you know, you would have heard of in the Department of Defense or NASA, Department of Energy labs like Sandia and Los Alamos. Um, really fantastic research goes on at these, uh, in these, these facilities. We are on the, literally the ground floor of the labs throughout our year, interacting with researchers, finding opportunities that we then aim to put in the hands of uh, folks like yourself. And what we do, is multi-step process. I'll just kind of go through each one of these. So our first step here is really trying to find technologies that fit you know, our investment thesis. Um, and if you're interested in that, you know, we could have kind of a separate discussion on what we look for. But after we go out and we find the technologies, we build teams of entrepreneurs. We'll talk a little bit more later about what is really an ideal team for FedTech. Um, and in the first phase that we're recruiting for right now, we, you go through something called the Startup Studio. And that's an eight-week program that is really designed to understand, is there an opportunity with the technology or, or, or is there not? And either outcome is really um, celebrated. If you find an opportunity, um, there's always next steps that we'll talk about in terms of, of how to build a business. If you find out your technology doesn't have a market, that's okay too. It's better to find that out after eight weeks um, rather than you know eight months or $8 million of investment. So what we do in the course of uh, the startup studio phase is really understand just what are the basic bounds of a business model. Um, if you do well during that phase, we have an opportunity that comes after it called the pre-accelerator. And this is, this is kind of the, our thinking and even the name of it is how do we take teams that are coming from the startup studio phase that show promise, that work really hard, and help them get to the point where they would maybe be competitive to enter a top tier accelerator, hence, hence the term pre-accelerator. And in that pre-accelerator phase, which lasts uh, significantly longer than the startup studio, we're going through and actually helping the companies uh, continue to validate their business model, but also do things like form legal entities, go after grant and private capital, and a number of other uh, activities to kind of become more real. 
So let's talk a little bit about what would happen in our startup studio that is uh, we're, that we're recruiting for now that would start in fall. So as I mentioned, it's about eight weeks and um, this is open to people from all over the country. So we've had um, a, a number of folks from, I think we're up to probably 20 some states that entrepreneurs have come from uh, to participate in the program. What we would ask you to do is if you're not local to the DC area, come to the opening and the closing in person. And really every other session outside of the opening and closing can be completed virtually. Um, you go through the exact same process that the in-person folks do in the DC area. Um, it's just everything's over webinar versus um, pitching uh, in person. So for those of you that are in the DC area, we meet on Tuesday nights typically and the anatomy of kind of a fed tech meeting is uh, one hour typically of a lecture or something germane to sort of the spin out process. So we'll talk about lean startup and, and some of the foundation of how to do um, customer discovery. But we'll also talk about things like technology licensing. How does it work to go after uh, grant opportunities in the form of things like SBIR, small business innovation research is a, a funding opportunity from the government. Um, and then the second hour of a fed tech meeting we break into small groups and we have you pitch on uh, what you learned in the course of your week. And, and one of the big things I want to stress here is that this is definitely this first phase. There's lots of customer interviews. We try to get our teams up to north of 50, ideally closer to 100 customer interactions. And what you're doing in the course of your pitches is working with the instructors to analyze what you've learned in your interviews and how that affects your business model. And it's really a full context sport. I, I don't want to undersell that where, you know, I think we're, we're uh, very tough on our teams. Everything is out of uh, love and, and, you know, with the goal of uh, getting our teams to make a lot of progress. But it's definitely something where you're going to be interrupted. You're going to have your assumptions challenged. Um, but again, you know, it's all for the goal of, of kind of moving forward. Um, I guess to hit again on, on one thing that is, is often challenging for the teams is, okay, you know, we pair you up around a new technology and you go through a process of learning about that technology, working with the inventor, understanding the um, tech landscape, but then really quickly we force you to go out and start interviewing real people to understand is this technology um, valuable at all. And that's often hard for people. Uh, we, you do have to make cold calls. You got to hustle. Uh, so really, you know, if that's something that you feel like is not what you really want to do, you know, we, we really um, would encourage you to, to, to look at a different type of program. This is really an out of the building, customer focused, customer discovery type of activity. Um, but you're not alone at all. So mention a little bit. So we have an amazing teaching team that will be there. Uh, everybody comes from the venture world in some form or fashion. We have mentors and advisors that have spun out companies from federal research in the past. We have people that are angel investors that um, have, have made investments kind of in gov tech space. Uh, and these folks are all there really to help you um, make introductions when possible, help you analyze what, what at times can be challenging feedback from the market. Um, so it's really, you know, everybody's on your side, but it is a, a lot of hustle to try to get enough interviews in that can really become, you know, relevant in terms of understanding if you have something or not. Um, just to give you some of the history, you know, I think our program is starting to get some nice attention. We've run for about four years now and worked with, um, I think close to 80 teams that have gone through the program, uh, a handful of new companies that I'll talk about in a moment that I think are kind of representative. Uh, I always tell people that are new to the program that really this is kind of a long game of entrepreneurship where we go out and we find really impactful technologies that are often, you know, half cooked, um, take a long time to get to be looking more like a product, but they're potentially life changing, you know, society changing technologies. If you're looking for something that maybe is more in a, a consumer internet space or something that you, where you can kind of form a company, raise a lot of money quickly um, and start selling a product or getting users, that's not really our, our game as much, unfortunately. We, we, um, it does take a few years to kind of get these technologies out of the lab. doesn't mean that there's not a huge financial opportunity downstream, but it just, just takes a little bit of time. We have a handful of different roles that I'll talk about here. So I think most of the people on this uh, webinar will be entrepreneur candidates. What we ask for the entrepreneurs is that you commit 10 to 15 hours a week uh, throughout the seven or eight weeks that we uh, work with you. And this is really intentional to try to make this doable 
with people that have a full-time job. Everyone that's participated in the program for the most part has a, a full-time job and they're doing this as kind of a side hustle. And because we're not providing funding at this stage, we really want um, you to, to be able to do this kind of on the fringes of your, your, your job. It doesn't mean that it's not hard. It doesn't mean that you can't, um, I always say to people that if, if your job is 100% inflexible, meaning you're chained to a desk, you can never take one call during, during the day or never do any activities. This might not be super easy, but there have been a lot of people that have participated that are coming at this as kind of a, a, a side hustle. Uh, for mentors, uh, we chances are have a couple mentors that are watching this, mentor candidates, much less intensive. We ask you to commit about 30 hours, or sorry, 30, 30 minutes a week and uh, attend some of the in-person sessions if you can. Every entrepreneur team will have a mentor that's, that's working with them um, in addition to the teaching team. And I don't think that we'll have inventors on this uh, webinar, but to talk a little bit about the inventor role and even the interplay between the entrepreneurs and the, the inventors, I would say about 90% of all the inventors we work with are more kind of technical consultants to the entrepreneur team. The entrepreneurs are going through the process of doing the customer interviews and are really representing the team in person. Um, we ask the inventors to be available to the entrepreneurs to answer questions and to really try to transfer as much knowledge as possible. Uh, usually that's a one hour to two hour week commitment. We do uh, occasionally get the inventors that are incredibly enthusiastic and are really full team members. That's great. Um, but we've had a good number of good outcomes that, uh, where that's not necessarily the case where the inventor is incredibly involved. Um, we would definitely never pair any team up with an inventor that is not uh, enthusiastic about the process though. That's kind of our, our question number one when we're going out and we're trying to find technology. So what I'll do is just give you a couple examples of kind of what this looks like in, in reality, um, kind of make this uh, slightly more tangible. So just give some examples of some of the teams that we're working with now that we're, we're, we're proud of. So um, this first one here, this is a material science technology that was developed uh, in a Navy lab out on the West Coast. Um, the lab itself does a lot within metrology, so the science of measurement. There happened to be this one really smart um, Caltech uh, PhD um, researcher that on his side kind of internal R&D project developed this new glass foam that had a lot of really interesting strength to weight characteristics. Um, pretty quickly, the Navy saw that there was an opportunity potentially to use this new material on the uh, sealed delivery vehicle. So if you're a fan of uh, special forces at all and you've seen the, the, the little things that kind of drive the seals uh, little vehicles that drive the seals underwater to get them close to wherever they're going. Um, but the, the technology was kind of in, in a test tube, essentially. It was like the size, they could manufacture this material about the size of a cigarette, um, not anything that was really scalable. We built a team around it a few years ago that um, consisted of a couple of business types, one uh, material science PhD, and they went out, went through our cohort. They did an amazing job in the cohort looked at all these different use cases for this glass foam. I remember they went and they watched um, cars uh, uh, demolition testing where um, cars are, you know, crashing into uh, uh, walls to, to get a sense of, you know, whether this could be used for uh, car bumpers. They talked to um, athletic helmet manufacturers. They looked at all these different markets and ultimately found a, kind of a niche within autonomous underwater vehicles, so using this uh, material kind of for the original purpose for the, the underwater use case. Um, and the team, you know, went through licensing, they signed a collaborative agreement with the Navy to work with the inventor, and just in the last couple months have actually started selling this product commercially. Um, took a while to kind of scale the manufacturing, but they now are able to take this material that was only manufacturable in a size of a cigarette, and now it can be made in giant blocks. Um, really neat, neat example. The team just won $150,000 SBIR uh, a month ago. And uh, what we hope is really off to the races. So again, takes a little bit of time, but really cool technology that could change uh, a lot of people's lives, hopefully. Other examples. So this is kind of a newer team that we think is going to be really interesting. So Sandia National Lab is a, a fantastic facility out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, that uh, does all sorts of research, so they, they do a lot within 
nuclear weapons programs is kind of their super secret side of the lab, but they also will do medical research. They do cybersecurity research, which is, is what this technology represents. But we identified a, a really enthusiastic um, inventor that had come up with this uh, unspoofable, unclonable electronic signature that he always thought had really wide commercial potential. So he entered the program. We paired him up with three entrepreneurs that um, had never met each other, but in the course of going through the program, you know, you never would have known that. They, they just could not have hit it off uh, better. And we just graduated them uh, in uh, May of this year, and we already have them applying to, to grant opportunities, and they're going to be going through and licensing. So kind of a newer, newer team, but um, this is actually, I think, going to be one of our first times where the inventor actually joins as a co-founder. So pretty excited about that. And we're starting to introduce this team even to larger corporate partners that could help them kind of incubate this technology. Um, just one more example here. One of our first uh, teams that ever formed a company out of the program was working with a fabric coating from uh, Naval Research Lab, which is a big research facility just um, outside of D.C. And similar story as the previous Navy team, great technology initially developed to break down nerve gas. So the idea is you could coat a uniform with this um, and not have to wear a full body hazmat suit, especially out in, in desert heat. Um, pretty interesting, stuck kind of in a lab environment, even though there'd been millions of dollars invested in it. We paired up an entrepreneur around the technology and he went out and formed a company and has gradually you know, been able to scale the production of this material. It was initially printed on a, a handkerchief size material. Now it's able to be printed on a, something the size of a shirt gradually larger and larger, um, and it's getting really close to signing a major distribution deal where this will actually be impregnated, this material, on um, a variety of different garments used by uh, soldiers and first responders. So, um, yeah, so it, anyway, if this sounds like something that could be interesting to you, um, general next steps that we'll have you go through would be to express interest in the form of an email to uh, myself or my colleague Jake, um, who works with me on the program. And what we would do is just a short interview where we just try to figure out if this is kind of a good opportunity for you in general. And, and that's usually relatively obvious based on kind of what your goals and your interests are. And um, yes, yeah, so we'll do an interview in the next uh, a few weeks. And um, throughout summer, we would, if, if you're accepted, there's kind of three outcomes that we would um, uh, give you um, hopefully relatively soon after the interview. One would be accepted. One would be not accepted, and then the other would be waitlisted. If you're accepted, what we would do is start to form up uh, teams throughout summer, pair you up with your researcher, and um, this would all lead up to the start of the cohort. And I'll talk more about kind of the, the dates and the logistics. Um, if you're declined, you know, we always would uh, encourage you to apply again in the future. We're happy to give you feedback and, and offer just general resources kind of on how to work with um, R&D labs or universities. Waitlisted is something we're going to try where um, we'll have you uh, be kind of on call if a team, if a spot opens up as we get closer to the cohort, and we'll also give you preferential admission to a future cohort if you end up being waitlisted. So we are, if you're uh, getting close to finalizing dates, we'll have our kickoff at the end of September. Uh, in D.C. where we'll have you come into D.C. for two days. We think we're going to do it over a weekend, actually, and we'll introduce a lot of the uh, concepts of, of how to do customer interviews. We're, we'll introduce kind of just, just um, the process you're going to go through. You'll get to meet your teammates. We'll do team building. Um, and then we'll have a series of meetings throughout fall, Tuesday nights, uh, in person for the folks in D.C., webinar for those that are outside of D.C., leading up to a closing at the end of November where we bring everybody back to D.C. and have a kind of a big uh, uh, fest uh, festive kind of pitch uh, event where we have, uh, usually it's about 200 people from government funding programs, from private investment uh, in the audience there and, and um, uh, yeah, and kind of celebrate the graduation. So for those of you that have uh, questions that maybe I didn't answer here, Definitely encourage you to go to our website, frequently ask questions. Um, there's lots of good information on there. If, if you don't find that your question is answered, please email 
um, myself or, or submit a question on the website. We're always happy to uh, answer and, and make sure that everybody kind of knows what they're getting into. But again, you know, big idea here is if you are interested in this as an opportunity, uh, express interest ASAP. We'll get an interview scheduled. Um, if you have not applied also online, please do that as, as actually the first step. So just to make sure you get into the system, just go to our website, submit an application, and uh, we'll get, get, get back with you uh, really quickly. So thanks to everybody for taking a little bit of time. Uh, definitely would be excited to get to meet you in person and think this is kind of a unique offering. You know, For those of you that are passionate about maybe starting a tech company that maybe have not found that perfect idea or have that perfect co-founder, we kind of provide that in the form of the program. And um, when things go well, uh, seeing teams find their market and maybe start a company around a technology that they had never had any idea existed before this program is really, really satisfying from our perspective. So hopefully that's going to be uh, you in the fall and looking forward to it. Thanks all.